130, we'll start the November meeting for the board at the Northampton Senior Center. We'll start off with public session and no one is here, so we'll move on to the approval minutes of the October meeting. And somebody oh. make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. So we'll second that. I'll second it. Is there any corrections or deletions or anything that somebody want to make note? Oh, I'm just confused. I, I printed this online and I got the minutes from October of the executive session. The minutes for September. Anybody else get that? Yeah, you all got that. Oh, you should have got those. It was September oh. executive board meeting. Because there were executive minutes from that board meeting, but you don't have those. You don't have those yet. That, from that October? Was, yes. This is from September. Right, yeah. right. With the October. So at the October meeting, you approved September executive session and uh, minutes. So, so you you wouldn't have seen those yet anyway. No, they're not available. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, you, you, no, the, let me back here. The October executive minutes you don't have yet. Okay. You don't have those. All right. That's but what the, I'm wondering. Okay. you got the September ex yeah. 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 at the October meeting. Yeah, we got those last time. No, I got it right here. Oh, well, yeah, I just read some. Right, but that's you actually were handed those at the. Um, All right. That so you don't really need to do anything with the October executive minutes. I'm sorry, the September executive minutes. What you still need to vote on is the October executive session, but you don't have those, and you won't have them until the next meeting. Okay. So that was a question, and so you see them, but those are just the regular ones. Right. So at the next meeting, you'll have to um, approve both the November <coughs> board minutes and the executive session from October. Oh, Any other questions on those? All in favor that they approve, please say aye. 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 Approved. Staff report, the person who was here. I'm Crystal Cody so the assistant director, volunteer coordinator for the Northampton Senior Center. Um, for the past few months, um, I've been working with the director, Patty Shaughnessy, on um, the craft festival and marketplace that we're having on November 22nd. Um, Saturday, November 22nd. We've um, currently, to date, we have 45 crafters and marketplace vendors approved um, for the festival. We have um, a number of volunteer opportunities that still need to be filled. <laughs> and, um, we have John Kaczynski who will be in charge of the kitchen, which is wonderful and, and thankful for. Thank you, John. And um, we have, we're going to be setting up starting next Thursday, the 20th. Um, a lot of the programming that um, regularly occurs at the Senior Center um, has been rescheduled for Thursday the 20th and Friday um, because we use every room in this building and we probably could add two more rooms and I could fill them with stuff. So um, I'm thinking that this year is going to be amazing. We need baked goods. Um, so if you cannot volunteer, if you're not available to volunteer and you would like to bake something, it could be dropped off on Thursday the 20th or Friday the 21st. If there's anybody in the community <laughs> that would like to bake something, um, it can be dropped off at the Senior Center during regular business hours, 8.15 to 4 p.m. on Thursday the 20th of November or Friday the 21st of November. Um, we are going to be having our regular um, jewelry sale that we have every craft festival that the Senior Center um, puts out their jewelry. And we also have collectibles. Our gift shop will be open. Uh, Mary's Bistro will be open for lunch service. We'll have photos with Santa Claus. Um, we're going to have brochures kind of this year that are going to have a map inside of them that will give people um, 
an idea where everything is because um, we've received some feedback before people are like oh I didn't know there was more down this hallway so we're trying to um, we're gonna have a little elf handing out brochures when people walk in so we're hoping that it's going to be very successful and any and everybody that would like to help please call me 413-587-1313 <laughs> So the craft fair is Saturday, November 22nd, and it's open to the public from 9 to 3. So as Crystal said, the whole building is <coughs> used for the um, festival, and this year we added the marketplace, which means it's not craft people. It could be people who um, market a particular product, um, meaning it's not handmade, but it's something that's saleable, <coughs> excuse me, and that the public would like to purchase. So. It's a little of everything at this event. And another program that um, is coming upon its one year anniversary with the Senior Center is the Nutritional Outreach Program, which was coordinated last December with Deals and Seals of Northampton, where we provide a bi-monthly food distribution to Northampton seniors that qualify um, for the program. And um, that program currently has 26 participants. Um, we have received over 100 applications, um, but after reviewing the applications, we have 26 participants that actually qualify for the distribution. Um, and we're doing the recertifications for the program, so for continued participation in 2015, those recerts um, will be going out in December. So. And Bob helped out with that program last week. And what was your feedback? How do you think that's going? Went very well. Everybody was very happy with it and very cooperative. Uh, the uh, driver asked uh, that this time they were using a new box. Mm -hmm. And they asked that the box would be returned. Yep. And everybody was very happy with that. Yeah. yeah. They've been returning them. Yeah. We yeah. They did ask if they could return them before the time. It's like a lot of them said, well, I don't have room to, to store this thing. Yeah. So they said, well. Uh, I discussed it with I think you, yep. and we just said, uh, you've got a room here that you've got a room. And, and so they made it return. That's good. Yeah, it's been going very well. We've um, received wonderful feedback. It's, the people are saying that this is the healthiest that they've been able to eat on a budget in a long time, because a lot of the foods are um, gluten-free, they're um, very organic and you know healthy foods are low made. Low salt, low cholesterol yeah. stuff, you yeah. know. So we have people who have um, who are low income on specialized diets who can utilize this food because um, a lot of the programs they do their best to be able to hand out food that is um, meeting gluten free needs and things like that. But it's a special kind of like specialty foods. But Deals and Steel um, has a lot of that stuff. So we're very fortunate to be able to help these people with certain dietary restrictions able to still get the extra help that they need. So it's good. Is there any questions? Jim. I have a request for you. Yes. Um I'm going to donate two cases of Who's? my first my second book. Okay. And you'll have the first selling of it here. Okay. And I'm going to put it on the paper. Okay. That the second book will be here. But I won't be here. Okay, and when is that? I'm going to give it, and when I'm hopefully, if everything works out, you should get him a box, two boxes of, in the mail, uh, two days before the fair. Okay. Oh, so what's the name of the book, Jim? Pardon? What's the name of your book? Family Lives. Can I have me, um, we can do a press, probably a press release. Let's make sure we get them before, that's the only part that I'm worried about, right now. There's publication date is kind of iffy and iffy, but I'm going to donate the whole thing to you. All right, thank you. That would be wonderful. But you can't sell them cheaper than the than the price in the book is. Right, because we have we haven't been okay. whatever's on the back yeah, of the book is what yeah. people are paying. And will you have opportunity to sign? If somebody sees me, I will always sign them. I do underwear too. Thank you. Well, it gets my book out and people read it, and it gets also people out from the senior center that'll come in here to to buy a book. You should have six or eight coming in the next week that well, know it's for sale here. You know, you're competing with Bookstone. But. Do you know, if, is Paul Demon working um, at the ski resort this winter? Yeah, he's supposed to. All right. 
So that would be a call and see if he would partner up with you for the holiday craft festival. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to finances and the FY15 budget. So that's a budget year that we're in, and um, you have a copy of our, <coughs> excuse me, our PS and OM account, and in both of the accounts, uh, and this is the city appropriation that we receive. Um, we still have um, funds in both of those, and at some point, as I do each year, I'll be saying you know, that um, it's getting closer to the end of the fiscal year and we will uh, take money out of our grant accounts and revolving accounts to pay for the salaries that we're obligated um, to pay um, and reimburse the city for. And it's, there it is. This isn't directly related to the budget, Tabby, but with the dissolution of the bid, did the bid provide any services in this area that affect, directly affected the CDSM? Just um, The bid, um, Dan Yacuzzo worked with us with the Commission on Disability, and that's how we were able to have braille menus and large print menus and a number of restaurants in Northampton. So we worked with them. Um, he also was very, um, and I should say the bid, um, other staffers, um, you know, listen to our concerns about uh, the shoveling of snow at um, curb cuts and, um, you know, I think they were very attentive to the needs of um, the disabled in our community downtown. So that's that's our involvement with the food bit. So I, I think it's going to have an impact on, on many, many um, people and businesses that we probably don't even know yet. Questions on finances, the director's report, please. Yeah. Um, beginning in January, uh, Lisa Steinbach, the public health nurse with the city of Northampton, um, will be having office hours here. We've been trying for a number of years to make a connection um, with the Board of Health, um, now called the Health Department, um, to have the uh, public health nurse here. And for different scheduling reasons now, we're going to be able to have um, Lisa here and um, the first Wednesday of the month, the second Tuesday of the month, and the third Thursday of the month at different hours. It's going to be put in our next uh, Con Street Chronicle and she'll be coming in to do personal um, consultations with seniors, uh, doing nutritional facts, doing mini clinics. So she's not going to just be sitting in the wellness center. She's really going to be out and about um, interacting. She also will be helping, um, as she has been doing, with our low uh, vision group. So there will be um, a substantial amount of, of uh, interaction with the um, public health nurse. So I think it will be good. People will be able to benefit by having her here. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned we had received a $3,700 LGBT grant from Highland Valley and we had our first planning session on how that money is going to be used and how we're going to be planning um, sort of regionally um, and it's East Hampton, Amherst, Williamsburg and Northampton Senior Center that are involved with that, that grant. So you'll, you'll be hearing more about that as we um, set up different uh, programs. Uh, Northampton Fire Department, as I've mentioned before, they were here in October talking about what is the Northampton Fire Department giving an overview. Yesterday, we're here doing um, how to use fire extinguishers. So we had seniors involved with it, but we also had staff out there so that staff would also know how to use a fire extinguisher. Um, and then December 17th, um, 10 to 11, they'll be here pre doing a presentation about preventing slips and falls. Um, and then I'll be working with um, Matt from the fire department um, starting in January. We'll have a whole series, so every month we'll be here to do some kind of a program. Um, we had an election day here, um, as we usually do for the um, September and November elections. Um, and we have Ward 3 and Ward 4 here, so a lot of voters come in. Uh, we had <clears throat> our usual, we had the coffee shop, the bistro, um, 
um, lots of books. Um, we had a bake sale, and it was just a very great time for a lot of people to come in the building because many people would, because of their age or their needs within the community, it isn't with the senior center. So you, get, you have a nice group of people coming in, seeing who you are, what you do, and then they also participate by spending some of their money here. <laughs> and, and that helps us. And um, we grossed about $1,300 with everything wow. that we had. Good. And it is pretty remarkable. For example, I just mentioned, we um, have the books. We brought all the books up that we have. Um, and we were selling them for 50 cents each. Typically, the uh, hardcover are $2, softcover $1, paperbacks 50 cents. But we made $322 just selling books. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great. Mary's um, mini sale table, $132.70. The bake sale, $393.75. Um, gift shop, $151. So we really do benefit when we have large um, groups of people in the building. Um, and thank you to uh, Crystal because we had to have a lot of volunteers to staff all of these areas. So it worked out good and, uh, you know, and some volunteers you know, are the same ones that will do a particular program um, on election day for us. They'll do the same activity so it really works out well. Because we really couldn't do a lot of this without volunteers. Um, the Senior Tax Workoff Program, this is the second um, time it's being offered. Um, applications were due October 1st through the 31st. Um, we had 18 seniors apply and four veterans. And so right now, uh, the assessor is going through the financial parts of it, and I'm doing all the applications, and uh, we should know by um, Monday all the people that are qualified to be in it. Because they may apply, but their finances may be over the limit um, for the program. So it's more than what we had um, apply let from last time. And um, you know, I think there was a great article in the paper that Chad Kane had written, um, which I think inspired a lot of people. The unfortunate thing about it, the article was in the paper the day before the applications were due. So a lot of people were trying to get their documents together. Uh, and, and many of them did get them together in advance, but also the day before <coughs> that day. I uh, mentioned, uh, Crystal mentioned the craft fair, which is one of our biggest um, fundraisers. And so um, I'll just reiterate what she said. Yes, we could use baked goods, and we could also use um, volunteers for that. It is a very um, exciting and fun day. I mean, there's work involved with it, but it is fun. Um, I believe, Barbara, you're going to be here doing the um, uh, Florence Savings Bank Community yeah. Choice Award. Um, Thing, so we could really use that. Oh, so whoever, just let Crystal know and what your hours could be and how we can use you. Um, I went to the transportation parking meeting October 21st to request about the eight uh, handicapped spots out here. And so actually there needs to be an ordinance written. I may have mentioned part of this before, an ordinance written on including the ones that we already have out there. So there is a question about do we really need eight, um, and I, I don't see where eight would be harmful. So um, you know, I, haven't, I haven't heard more yet from uh, Ryan O'Donnell, who is working with me on it. Uh, October 22nd, I went to Capital Improvements because I'm requesting funds um, for a new van. And so I you know, put out the information and the rationale to why we need a van, if not more than one van. Um, so that, that's within their documents for me along with any other city department that's act, asking for money for capital improvements. So uh, they had some great questions and it was you know, a nice group to do a presentation to. Um, October 23rd, we had the stormwater informational session here um, for seniors or actually anybody in the public who wanted to come. Um, there were about 35 um, people there. Uh, Terry Colhane from the DPW, who's the chair of the uh, board, and a DPW staff person did a presentation. Um, I think there <coughs> were a lot of um, questions, and I hope people left um, with a better understanding about what the whole thing is about. And you know, the you know, there's a dollar amount tied to it, so that's not always easy for people. Um, 
And they also uh, provided some handouts for it. If anybody wants any handouts about the stormwater fee, there are some on the table up by the computer room. And that's what I have um, for the uh, director's report. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, Crystal, why don't you talk about Valley Gives? Um, the Senior Center's Friends Group, which is Friends of the Northampton Senior Center, Elder Vision, Inc., is participating in Valley Gives Day, which is on um, December 10th. So it's an online giving day um, where anybody who is a unique donor, which means that you've never given online to Valley Gives before, if you were to give a minimal donation of $10 on Valley Gives Day to any nonprofit, which Elder Vision Inc.'s nonprofit for the Northampton Senior Center is trying to raise funds to help with the new van purchase, um, a unique donor, a one-time unique donor distribution or donation, excuse me, um, can actually qualify the nonprofit to earn upwards of $290,000 in prizes and grants and things like that. So um, having, if we have our computer lab open that day from 8.15 to 4 p.m. with people that are, you know, qualified computer tutors that can help you do an online donation um, if you've never done one. And, or you can even schedule a donation. So say that you're away on the 10th and you decide that on as of December 1st at midnight, you could log onto your computer, go onto the website, which is razoo.com, it's R-A-Z-O-O.com, and then you just type in Elder Vision Inc. and it will bring you to our donation page. And you could schedule a online donation, which will then be donated on the 10th. So it's a wonderful way for us to qualify for some additional funds um, to be able to purchase this new van for our senior transportation program. Um, we uh, have um, recorded some fun PSAs with um, Northampton NCTV. They came to the Senior Center and they interviewed some of our low vision participants who um, very much depend upon um, the senior center's transportation, and they're quite um, upset, um, distraught about not have it ha that we do not have transportation at this time. It makes having all of them being legally blind or completely blind. It makes using PBTA transportation very difficult for them. Um, so they really, really, really are looking forward to us getting a new van. Um, we also did some visits, home visits with the NCTV um, to interview some of our seniors who are homebound, they do not drive any longer, they um, participated in senior center special events like holiday dinner, pot of luck for years, um, they're unable to participate at this time because there's no way for them to get here. So um, I'm hoping that between the PSAs on our Facebook um, as well as you know being on our Rezu page when people link to it um, to make donations that it will help get our message out and the need out to the community. Any questions on the director's report? Okay, we'll move on to building and grounds. Okay. Yeah. So it just is noted here when the senior center is closed, city governance closed the half day before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and afterwards. Um, so we won't be here. Um, Bob has been kind of doing the last of the cleanup outside, um, trimming all of the um, retention ponds and getting that ready. We're all keeping an eye on our our three Christmas trees out there to make sure that they're <laughs> cut down. Um, <laughs> and so I, you know, I would say just with the grounds, it's you know hopefully getting um, the handicapped parking spaces in um, in before. The winter, so that we have them available. If the weather forecast is that good. You can practice your plowing yeah. tomorrow morning. Yeah. One inch. Well, yeah, one inch. And inside the building, we haven't really had any um, major problems. No major issues with um, anything in here. We had a lot of the lighting um, enhanced out in the lobby. Um, a number of the balances went out. And so they all got repaired, and what a difference 
with the light because it almost was like now we had full sunlight in our lobby because it was so dim in that lobby, especially when the sun's not out. So the, the just ha switching everything out and replacing light bulbs um, it has really improved visibility in the uh, lobby. Any questions on building new grounds? That's good. Now we'll go on to old business. <coughs> so, Kick the Tires, New Man Campaign. Um, I'm just going to mention some of the donations that we've received thus far. And Crystal mentioned about Valley Gifts, so that's one of the ways people can contribute. <laughs> to raise funds for the um, the van. Uh, Morris Gould, um, a very active donor to the Senior Center, uh, donated $2,000. Uh, Mary Ann and Robert Foote donated $5,000. Uh, Sharon Martula, $200. And Patricia Poulin, $200. So those are some of the donations thus far. So uh, we're appreciative of that. And um, as Crystal mentioned, there's little snippets that will be um, aired that talk about the need for um, a van and uh, its uses and that people can contribute to the um, campaign. And there'll be some mention of all of this again in our um, December issue of Constant Chronicle. Uh, and again with Florence Savings Bank with the Customer um, Choice Awards, the request will be that if, if we do get um, some of the funding it would be towards the van, which is what the um, Friends Group, Elder Vision Inc., did last year. The money what it was going towards the van. Have you covered that with the Facebook page yet? The Razoo? Yes. Okay. Yes. Twitter and Facebook. We have a Twitter account too. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's an event. There's actually two events. One for the uh, schedule your donation mm -hmm. and one for the actual... Just a link? Uh, I will put a link. I put an event, but I will put a link. The thing with Facebook is your links yeah. kind of go away after a while, but I'll keep reposting. We would put it as of December 1st, because that's when you can start scheduling yep. your donations. So we could put the link on Facebook and Twitter as of the 1st, so people could get It's just a lot easier than remembering where I Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's a link we can share. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the link's up there now, but we'll definitely have it go straight to the page for December 1st when people can start scheduling. Great. Patty, did you yeah. apply for CPA funds? Um, I inquired about, I, took, I downloaded the application and then um, I had a question about something with the application and called planning and I cannot apply for CPA funds for a van. You can't. You can't buy a van through CPA. You can do recreational fields, I could do a bocce court, I could do a swimming pool, but I can't do a van. Um, that's not one of the items. So, you know, unless there's some other thing, it's not going to be a van. So I, I, I was surprised and disappointed because that was one of the three ways we were going to be able to purchase a van. Like an RV? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that, do, uh, yeah, that yeah. doesn't qualify, unfortunately. Wow. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. a junky old house. Anything other under old business? I will make a comment that I got about 20 emails between this morning and yesterday. Uh, where was I for the veterans breakfast? And it was wonderfully received by the 20 people. And I guess it was really, really, you guys did a really good job. Well, so, you know, last year was the first year we did it, and it was a small undertaking, and this year it was bigger, and Calvin Coolidge um, made a contribution of um, some of the products that were served. And um, we were pancakes, and so next year we'll just make it bigger and better. I was there. The war stories were flying in all directions. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. That's what I yeah. heard. Uh, some were true, and some of them <laughs> memory get a little foggy. <laughs> right. yeah. and, and the mayor came, and yeah. I think yes. that was great. He served in the uh, Air Force. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was nice that he came. And I also will um, comment and thank Rita and John Booth, the lap who came up with the idea to, in the display case outside the gift shop, to do something 
um, for vet veterans um, in some artifacts, and um, they also brought in some books that people can look through. So that's great. That was an addition to what we have. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Um, so, uh, the 15th member of this board, uh, there was a vacancy, and Alexis, and I'm going to pronounce her last name, I'm sure Ron, Polera, no, oh, that's not so hard, Polera, <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Polera, um, was, her name was submitted um, to City Council at the last meeting for the first reading, and the next meeting is the uh, second reading, so we will have a full team of members um, once she's appointed. Um, Alexis actually was a volunteer here um, for a while, and if you remember Dominique Cruz Saw, um, who was our department secretary, and then she was promoted to assistant director, it's her mother. So um, yeah. I think what's great too is who, whoever you have, you bring other people into the mix, um, and that we look forward to to um, Dominique and her husband volunteering again. <laughs> so many, many, but it will be nice having um, a full board again. And um, I think Alexis will bring a lot of um, her culture and um, enthusiasm to the senior center. Yeah, so ARP taxes, as you know, we have those here every single year. And um, this year there was a little bit of a <clears throat> discussion about um, quarry checks. And we're mandated by law to quarry check any volunteers who are in this building. And basically ARP was saying they already quarried their people. This, this was a bigger conversation than we've had in previous years where it kind of just goes by the wayside. But, um, their, their uh, point of view was that they're all poured, so they don't need to do it again with us. And that isn't the way that I looked at it, because we are mandated to or reject any volunteer. So this has been going on probably since April to try to figure out you know, what was going on. And we were actually waiting for a letter from ARP because the statement was made that they have a special uh, understanding with the state that we would not need to do our own quarry. And so I talked with Emmett Schmarzo from the Department of Elder Affairs, um, and there is no such agreement um, that he has been going back and forth with ARP as well. So we didn't get a letter, and then it was like all of a sudden we got an email saying that we had until a particular day, which was just like a couple of days from when we got the email by the end of the day to say we are or are not going to be doing it. So um, I started calling other senior centers as to what they're doing because there, there would only be two senior centers um, in Massachusetts that weren't going to participate because of the um, mandate of uh, us having to court. So in talking to other senior center directors, here's pretty much how it's going to work, how it works somewhat for them and how it's going to work for us. So we aren't sponsoring the ARP taxes. We're allowing ARP tax people to come in and use our building. Um, you know, we'll accommodate them, but everything is pretty much on them. So if there's any issue or liability, it's on them. It's not like any other group that we allow to come in here to use our space. If something happens, it's on them. So we would still do the um, intake at the front, making the appointments, but everything else is their responsibility. So here's the space, and, and we're glad that you're here, as well as the people who are involved are glad that you're here, meaning the seniors taking advantage of it. Um, and then um, to continue to work on this whole issue about quarry checks and, you know, ARP pretty much is saying that they're way better than what Massachusetts asked for in a quarry, so. You know, they had like a 52-page um, quarry guideline um, 
or no, I'm sorry, not guideline, policy. It was an official AARP 52-page quarry policy that listed each and every crime um, and severity of crime in which somebody could be charged and or convicted of that would disqualify them from being an AARP volunteer. Um, and they said that their um, policy was more extensive than that even of the state and the majority of the municipalities that they were dealing with. Um, and then they made reference to like the state allocates money to the municipalities who then um, do the quarry. They're, the state is entrusting their money um, and that entrusting the municipalities to then do the quarry. So if we are entrust, we can entrust that, then we can entrust AARP to do the quarries. And we, they said that we don't have to consider their volunteers to be our volunteers, but if that makes us feel better, then that, then they understand. Um, <laughs> But their thing was is that they didn't want, they had two incidences that they gave examples of, um, which are, you know, concerning um, they, for them. They had two volunteers, one who had a, a very common name, who when a quarry was done on this woman, um, she had a rap sheet of, you know, five pages that came out. So every time the quarry was done, she then had to contact the state, or AARP had to contact the state on her behalf to get it known that that wasn't her who had this record. And then the other one was um, a gentleman who was a minority who had been arrested for a crime that he hadn't committed, um, and it was in his file, it had, if you looked up his criminal file, it had said that it basically had more to do with him being a minority than him actually being committing a crime. So AARP actually had to go with this gentleman um, to a lot of the places that he was just trying to offer his time as a volunteer to help people with the taxes. So they gave those two reasons as to why they were trying not to put their volunteers through the quarry double jeopardy law, I guess if you want to refer to it as that, which it doesn't really exist, but that was their justification when we spoke to them. So basically, they're saying um, that they're doing the quarry. We don't know what that person has done, but they're saying that that person can be a volunteer for the ARP program. And what I might consider, like, I don't think that person really should be here for whatever their criminal background is. Could be one incident, but they think it's okay. You know, and, and I'll just use an example. Now I'm not even going to give an example because I don't want it to, to sort of mushroom. Um, so it, it really, now they have their volunteers, they've quarried them, and it's no different than some other group to come in. And here's the space, and it's, it's on you. And I have a copy of the policy, if any of you as representatives of the board want to look over the policy for your own comfort level. <laughs> so I can long, totally make a long story <laughs> short, it, it straightened out. Yeah. So what I can say about quarries is um, I believe it straight down. doing the quarries, I can't share that information with other people. I can share it with um, that individual if there's some issue with it. I can tell Crystal that that person is okay, meaning the quarry's okay, so that they can volunteer. Or I may say, no, that person isn't um, going to be able to volunteer here, and that volunteer, potential volunteer who has a, you know, a quarry check that's not good, you know, has the opportunity to come and talk to me. I can give them a copy, and um, you know, they do have the opportunity to express concern about it. But a lot of times, people also will tell you um, in the interview that you know they have some background um, issues, um, and then you decide, you know, you're not going to put somebody who steals in where there's money like at the coffee shop or taking money for the bake sale or whatever. So there's some things that you just have to figure out what is the person here for. So they're not going to be in medical transportation if they have, you know, a, a DUI and, you know, a few other driving without a license and things like that. So, you know, the judgment isn't with me anymore. It's uh, with uh, the ARP program. I think things are still going to work out, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens. And we're glad that ARP will be providing this program. That's the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 So.
Okay, and then we'll go on to the code of conduct. So, um, so you do look at this often. Um, I think the last time, what's the date on it? May of this year. And I think I said to someone before when I was passing these out, the changes, is that this gets changed based on people's behavior in the building. And, um, you know, I also will say that you don't need to put signs up until somebody does something that isn't how they should be behaving. So um, these are based on some situations in the senior center. So you have a copy of the current code of conduct and the sheet that I gave you, which has two recommendations um, that I'd like to make to be included in our code of conduct. And the current number two would now be what is written on the sheet as number two. So all the numbers would just get switched down. Um, but number two would be participants may be requested and then required to complete an attendance sheet with their name, address, and or other information for program services or other opportunities offered in the senior center, either by the senior center or outside groups using the senior center. <coughs> and what that means is that we have um, groups who come in who it's sort of a collaboration of a program with us and with them. <clears throat> and there um, can be or has been hesitation by that group to give us any names or <coughs> addresses of people in that program. Um, when I say we collaborate, it means that, you know, I'm, you're getting to use the space because it's helping our seniors and you also aren't having to provide a liability insurance for a million dollars to use a space. Um, it's no different than when we didn't have my senior center and people used to have to sign their name and um, <coughs> they were from, which um, helped us in, in totality of everybody in the building, like we want to know who's in the building. So it's kind of getting to that, still having my senior center because somebody might be coming in for a program on nutrition and we're never going to see them again. They don't need to get a my senior center card unless they're Northampton, Lees or Florence. It would be for other people so that we can document other people who are using our space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not for every single group coming in because some of it, it's they're using our space, they can be here, we're glad they're here, but it doesn't have any relationship to our programming for uh, seniors or disabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a comment here. Uh, looking at number five and number eight, could they be combined and kind of, it, it seems like one repeating what the other one is doing for the most part, for the two additions. They both and take responsibility for the personal care, the personal health and medical care. They're very similar. It seems like it's a little redundant. Yeah, I don't I think, having two separate ones. Yeah, I, I think maybe it was separate only to make it sort of a more impact on each one of those things. But certainly they could be they're actually five, six and eight could be combined. Yeah. I mean if if people so desired. I just wanted to say, just, it would reduce the number of yeah, this is getting unwieldy, 10 and 12, and next time it's got 15, and mm -hmm. it gets unwieldy when you get more and more, and if they're more compact and compressed, it may be easy to read and easy to follow. That's well, you can, you can make a motion. I would like to make a motion that someone look into uh, combining 5, 6, and 8 into one uh, statement. I'll second that motion. Second that, Jim. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, any further discussion? Anybody? Okay. Uh, well, just one thing. Uh, you will get back to us with a, mm -hmm. a, a revised statement. Yeah, it's, it's you voted for five, six, and eight to be looked at together. Yeah, to, to re a recommendation that. to yeah. combine them. Okay. Can I ask a question on number two here? Uh -huh. We have participants that may be requested. Is there any time when they will not be requested? 
Well, if they're kind of, I'll use this as an example. If there's a homeless meeting here, yeah. a meeting for the study of homeless in our area, yeah. um, and we don't, it doesn't really matter to us who's in that meeting, so I wouldn't be requesting names okay. and okay. addresses. So there will be times that was right. my question. Yeah, there are times it doesn't okay. make sense for us to do that. We know the code of conduct. How many other people in the area know the code of conduct? Um, we have it posted on all of the bulletin boards in the senior center. It's also posted at both of the, the, um, the um, monitors where you scan in. And on occasion, it's put in our newspaper. But, you know, I, I think at one time we had talked about passing this out when people signed up um, for a My Senior Center scan card. So, I mean, it would be nice to actually have a brochure and, or a packet of information to give to people who are what you might call new enrollees. And I have one more up in number seven where it says computers used by staff center can disqualify a participant. I would put would disqualify a participant in that way because you've left yourself kind of open in the next statement for an unspecified number of times, but at least you are going to reprimand them or something. So. Right, so number seven that Jim was just referring to um, has to do with our computer room. Um, and it's asking that participants using the computer room must not compromise <coughs> the integrity of the senior center computer network and must adhere to the direction of use stated by senior center staff. Misuse of computer computers or ignoring directions of computer use by senior center staff as Jim said, would disqualify a participant from use of the computer computers for an extended period of time. Yeah. And that, that actually was a situation that we're probably still going to be dealing with with a senior who compromised our system. And, um, you know, Joanne worked with uh, MIS, including contacting what happens at Forbes, because those are public computers. And um, so there was one gentleman um, who we've been working with and currently he is not allowed to use the computer room until um, it's reviewed again in February. So, um, so number seven was the, the next one, which I guess the number's not going to matter if things get changed around, um, but it, it would be good to have that in. And I also think that we really need to have a policy about the computer room. You know, because we've had people um, who believe one computer belongs to them, and you know, there's arguments of not uh, yeah. real intensity in there um, if somebody is using it and they want to use it. That's one thing. But we should have a computer policy. All the libraries have them, the schools have them, um, and we, we, we don't have one. Because we have people that will use the computer lab and then they save something like under on that computer and then when in, your, in an other public building that you go to you have to bring like a flash drive or something like that and you're trying to save something you don't save it on the computer but without a policy how is that enforced it's more of a request and then there's nothing to back up your request so, so those are just two um, recommendations I would make and if you vote on these today then they could be incorporated and you could get a final copy at the next um, board meeting in December. I'll make a motion we vote on these right now to go with the message with changes as suggested. Second that motion. Second, put it below. Any further discussion on it? All in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? John, can I at some point like talk with you because you did the computers at JFK and you probably have a lot of insight about that. Anyone have anything for a new business? Me. Jim? We get paid so much as being <clears throat> we get paid so much for being directors here, you know, on the board and everything else. I would suggest that maybe when we come and it will also bring us into the in the center more that we at least get a free cup of coffee the day of the board of directors there. <laughs> well, water's not good enough to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe it's already a policy. 
<laughs> Are you volunteering yeah, today? You're volunteering today. Yeah. Day, that's one thing. Yeah. But just as a board address, I go out for coffee every morning. Oh, okay. It's just my break in the day. The and I would, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a better place to have it. And it also gets us as a board of director visually around the people to see us as board of directors. So are you saying a cup of coffee the day of the meeting or any day that you're in the building? Any day you're in the building. What's it cost us? A nickel? Uh, Oh, I think it's a dollar fifty. <laughs> well, I think you vote on it. If you yeah. want to make it a make it a motion, Jim. Yeah. I make a motion. It's a board of directors. Oh. Oh. Wait, oh. Teresa has a question. What's that? Mm -hmm. Teresa has a question. I don't drink that much coffee. How much do you pay here for a cup of coffee? A buck and a quarter. Dollar seven. Dollar seven. Dollar seven. seven. Yeah. Isn't it? A dollar with seven cents. Yeah. Same yeah. for uh, tea, unless you want a curate uh, that you pay. Well, yeah, but let's let's keep it just a plain cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Make that motion, Jim. I make the motion that whenever a board of director is in the building and they want a cup of coffee, it's or free. tea. Or tea. Or tea. Very good. Excuse me. <laughs> Do I hear a second? I second that? that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll just say, remember that not every volunteer who's in the coffee shop is going to know that you're on the board. We will so tell them. That's a good thing. You have to you need to just email you know, say, yeah. Yeah. I'm so and so, I'm on the uh, Council on Aging Board, and um, I'm here to get my coffee. <laughs> but you have, have to tell those folks. <laughs> We we'll have to let those people that are in the coffee shop serving the coffee to let them know. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Now, is this one cup of coffee per day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I'm back in here. Well, it's, it's well, well this particular working in the afternoon, so they won't know that you've already been there in the morning. Okay. Would there be any conflict with other volunteers who come in as often? I mean, as often who think that they should get a cup of coffee? I mean, is there anything that? We potentially raise this sort of well, I volunteer and we do too. I mean, I don't you, think so. You, you asked for the yays. Did you ask for the nays? Yeah. On this? Yeah. 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 No, it's just a motion. We didn't vote. We didn't vote. We didn't vote. We're discussing the motion. As the volunteer coordinator, I see it being a problem because I have people ask all the time, like, well, what's, why does that person get to go behind the desk? There's a sign right here that says, nobody can go behind this reception desk. Why did that person just walk past there? And if I was to say, oh, because she um, works in the business office and she volunteers behind an administration, but it's still a question that is asked that I have to answer that people want to know why one person is entitled to something that they're not. Um, so as the board of directors, you definitely vote and approve things that happen within the senior center, um, but does that entitle you to anything over another volunteer? Just a so, so what I'm going to say too is that when volunteers are on duty, they can have free coffee yeah, and or tea. Um, and now as I'm thinking about this in terms of ethics, like are you getting, would you be getting something that would be an unfair um, or not a reasonable uh, for other a benefit, people. A benefit, a benefit, benefit others, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a benefit that other people yeah. are. I mean, you're right. So, Jim, like if you're here for doing your writing class, yeah. there you go. I think if you're, so this is my opinion, if you're just coming in and, yeah, I think I'll take a look at the books and I'm going to, you know, just kind of chit chat in the lobby and stuff, that that probably wouldn't be. Uh, situation, but that's just what I'm saying. Looking at the bigger picture of the ethics of it all, because I know it is only a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, but I think it's um, unfair advantage. But that's my perspective on it. Of course, everybody's got their tags, and your yep. name, and what it is. So they, in the coffee shop, would certainly see it. And it would be informed of what was voted on. That's, but it's up to you all, and we're going to take a vote for this. It will also give other people a chance to know who the board of directors people are. Yeah. Wear your tag more often. Pardon? Wear your tag more often. I do. I wear my tag more often. I do. I do. A lot of people will come up and say, You're on a board of directors, Jim. Can you bring this up? I think everybody knows who you are. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. 
about the directors. They're not in here every day. Or, you know, we, some people don't come in once a week even. Um, there are a few people that are here every day, or pretty much so. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just, how much would it amount to is what I'm trying to get at. Would it be a real? Yeah, I'm not even looking at it in terms of the cost. Yeah, the money. I'm looking at it. Doesn't interest. I think, frankly, it's just a darn cost confusion. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're going to make it where a, a volunteer yeah. gets to pick up a copy. It should be that's any true. volunteer. Because <laughs> what yeah. makes a board of director volunteer yeah. any more special yeah. than yeah. a volunteer yeah. that works at the reception desk? Because I come in there sometimes when I'm not volunteering at all. Yeah. Walton, but I do. Yeah. All of you are equal in my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Thank you. I call the question. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on what you said about the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the 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 how many, who, who said I, just so it can be recorded? Good boy. 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 <laughs> okay, then I'll make a motion to yeah.